Everything in your soil, from biology to nutrient availability and more, is heavily influenced by soil pH. Understanding this characteristic is critical to getting the most out of many of the products you use on your farm. Soil pH is a measurement of the soil's acidity or alkalinity. pH is one of the first things that I look at when I look at a soil test. So why did we talk about CEC and base saturation before we talked about pH? Base saturation is going to tell you what nutrients we need to move, and CEC is going to tell you how fast you can move them to adjust your pH. If your soil pH is off, then you run into a lot of nutrient availability issues. And this ultimately is going to lower that crop's yield potential because it's not going to have everything that that crop needs. So what we consider neutral pH is 7.0. If it's over 7.0, we consider it alkaline. If it's under 7.0, we consider it acidic. Every point of pH we move is 10 times more acidic than the point before. A pH of 5 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 6. So it is 100 times more acidic than a pH of 7. Certain crops like a little lower pH, like corn would respond to a 6.2 or 6.3 pH, whereas alfalfa or soybeans might like a pH closer to that 6.8 range. If you look at a number of those different soil pH charts that are out there, if you look on those charts and you see as you get to lower pHs, the micronutrients become more available, but there's more tie-up and less availability of some of those primary nutrients. If you've got a pH that's in the low range, you've got excess hydrogen. Well, that hydrogen is actually taking the place of calcium. So trying to raise a crop like soybeans, you have to remove that hydrogen and replace it with another cation, such as calcium or potassium. And then on the flip side, as you get a higher pH, you're gonna get more things like calcium and potassium, but you're going to greatly restrict the amount of availability that you have of those micronutrients. When you have high pH situations, you have typically excess calcium, which can tie up phosphorus in the soil. So you're going to have to be more particular about your phosphorus application and timing and placement. A grower should be really concerned about their soil pH because it does have a direct effect on that nutrient availability. And this is what's going to help that grower make good management decisions. Um, when they come to their fertility program to make sure they're applying those nutrients that they need and then be able to feed off those nutrients that are already available in their soil. The whole idea of getting your pH in that 6.0 to 7.0 range is to try to make sure that the nutrient availability is its maximum potential for the crop to take it up. If we have our pH balanced, we have a better opportunity to make a better ROI. pH varies across the United States, and a lot of that has to do with the geography that you're in. In areas with high rainfall, those pHs naturally tend to be on the lower side, more acidic. Rainfall adds additional oxygen and hydrogen into the soil, and with chemical reactions, that provides more hydrogen into that soil solution. The more hydrogen that you have, the lower that soil pH is going to be. So I live in western Kansas. We're in a low rainfall area, so our pH range is usually around 7 to 8.5. As you move east of where I live and you get into Missouri or Iowa, where you have higher rainfall, you're going to have pH ranges that are lower. However, irrigation water doesn't have the same effects as what natural rainfall does. Oftentimes with your irrigation water, you're getting other cations, calcium for example, and that calcium will build and bind to the soil more readily than what hydrogen will, so it's not going to have as huge of an effect on that overall soil pH. So this video was about pH. In the next video, we're going to talk a little more in depth about hydrogen and sodium. For more information on pH, visit agroliquid.com.